farm system on Lenacos is a pretty traditional uh, sheep and beef breeding operation. Um, there is about, oh there's a 1300 hectare platform in total and there's a range of uh, country classes on there. There's about I think 350 hectares of flats um, and then a mixture of some pretty hard hill and big blocks um, as well as some improved hill country. Um, they run uh, 2200 um, mixed stage ewes, uh, lambing 1st of September and have a smaller group of 900 early lambing ewes uh, that are lambing in the middle of August um, with the, all their hoggets going to the ram as well. Um, there are some differences in the ownership of the beef model but um, in uh, practical terms it's a standard beef breeding operation where all calves are sold at weaning. Um, on the sheep side, uh, all lambs, apart from ewe replacements, are sold store at weaning time as well. A reduction test uh, was first done in 2019 by the local vet clinic, um, and that highlighted um, some um, issues with uh, drench resistance. We've got um, a BZ resistant uh, nematodirus worm, um, and then a dual BZ and levamazole resistant um, Talidorsagia, or some of you may know it as Ostertagia. Um, so compared to some of the, the struggles that are reported with triple resistance in a lot of North Island farms, um, we're, we're in an enviable position, um, but Lanacost is on the precipice. We do have a multi-drug resistant Ostertagia that if the system is set up to rely on drench input and chemical input to control contamination, we are going to see a rapid progression to more serious issues. And uh, the, the onus is on us now to, is to implement some uh, farm management practices that are really going to halt the progression and ultimately we'd like to see that improve. The farm system I described before isn't the farm system that's been run in the past and we've got to remember that the drench resistance status that we are at today is inherited from the last 40 or 50 years of farm management practice and so in, in the past um, if there was a reliance on a lot of chemical use the true fact is drench resistance arises because we use chemical to control parasites and the more chemical we use the more we're going to select for resistant parasites and so uh, policies like uh, finishing a lot of lambs through the summer, um, trading lambs and bringing lambs from outside farms and not quarantining them onto our farms, uh, having high ratios of sheep and few cattle to come and clean up after them, uh, running um, systems where we're con constantly low on feed or low on covers and animals are under nutritional stress. There are a lot of systems factors that increase our reliance on chemical to control parasites and where we use a lot of chemical we drive resistance. So the focus uh, of where we're going forward now is to try and maintain a high level of productivity while making conscious decisions to reduce the amount of chemical we use to achieve clean feed and low parasite burdens. It's a really good question as to what non-chemical strategies can we use to reduce the parasite burden. And um, let, let's just tick off a few of the big ones. Is um, When I carry a lot of lambs through the summer, they are a stock class that has a lower level of immunity to parasites and they are more prone to one, suffering the production costs of parasites, but also to developing high burdens and high egg counts. Um, and so when I carry a lot of young stock, I, I rely a lot of the time on using chemical to control those parasites, burdens in those stock, and to keep the pasture that they rotate on clean. Um, and so removing that stock class or a proportion of it from my farm system straight away reduces my reliance on chemical. Um, a policy of selling more land store is one that the team here at Atlanta Costa are looking at um, to, to reduce the number of young stock through the summer and uh, to reduce our reliance on drench. Um, that's not um, necessarily the answer for everyone but it's an answer we've looked at considering the climate, the supply of feed that we can deliver through the summer as well. Um, there are 
Um, other options would be uh, extending drench intervals out in young stock by using clean crop options through the summer. So forages like uh, rape, um, potentially uh, chicory or plantain, um, lucerne where it's uh, got sufficient moisture to grow through the summer. Parasites are less effective at cycling on those feeds and with appropriate monitoring um, we can extend the drench intervals out and drench lambs on those feeds less frequently um, yeah, reducing the chemical input through those months. Um, increasing the proportion of cattle on a farm so running higher ratios and currently at Lanacos uh, the ratio is uh, looking somewhere in the region of 72% sheep to 28% cattle uh, so healthy cattle numbers here um, I deal with plenty of other farms in North Canterbury where we've got sufficiently, significantly less cattle and that raises challenges because there's no cross-grazing effect. There are no cattle in the system to clean up sheep parasites. And, um, and again, when you've got no other stock classes to clean up sheep parasites, you start to rely more heavily on chemical to control them. Drenching the ewe flock is a, yeah, is a really important topic is that um, I, I want to ensure, or the team here want to ensure that whenever we use a treatment in a ewe it's justified by evidence that the ewe is actually suffering from parasitism. And um, pol policies like fecal lead count monitoring ewe flocks at critical times of the year um, to ensure that burdens are low, or if we were suspecting that a drink would be beneficial that we demonstrate they actually have parasites first. Um, that ultimately we're looking to to use as little chemical in use as possible. They're a stock class, if they're well fed, if they're in good condition, um, they shouldn't need chemical to control the parasites in them. We monitored um, U egg, egg counts in February um, this year, and um, while the mixed stage U's had extremely low egg counts, the two dudes actually had surprisingly high egg counts in the, in the order of eight to 900 eggs per gram. Um, and so for a, for a mob like that that's got demonstrated high egg counts that we were suffering, well, we observed them to be in condition that we weren't happy with and we knew they were coming to a critical part of the season, we are going to use drench um, targeted like that to, to lift use or to, to remove burdens from use that are currently genuinely suffering from parasite burdens. Body condition score as a, as a management practice, um, not just about parasites, there's a whole suite of production responses. And in terms of the best spend for your time um, with your youth log, body condition scoring is going to be right up there in terms of how much time you invest for the return you get. And body condition scoring, particularly immediately after weaning, so you can set your use up uh, to, to have light use gain weight through the summer and go into tupping in excellent condition is going to give you phenomenal returns on that investment um, and equally body condition scoring in the autumn so that you can targetly preferentially feed low body condition score sheep through the winter again it's going to be a massive return in terms of the lamb, we uh, lamb lambing weights lamb survival and then the pre-weaning growth rates out of those use um, but in terms of a parasite management strategy, um, any decisions to drench use, we would probably be targeting use that were in light condition because we see the productivity benefits of lifting the tail end um, is where we're going to achieve economic returns for it. But important to know that we'll only be drenching those light sheep when we've genuinely demonstrated that they are light due to parasite burdens and it's not going to be a default position of drench light use because there's plenty of other conditions that will lead to use being light body condition score. In terms of testing to see um, whether stock are parasitised, um, the tool we have that's uh, available and economically feasible is faecally counting. And it's not a perfect test, uh, there are flaws with it for sure, but um, you get a lot of useful information for a very small cost. Um, the turnaround and results is really quick, and with the right experience and taking into effect the, the condition, the feeding levels of the stock, and 
you know, an experienced advisor's previous experience of how to interpret those that can provide really valuable information. So yeah, fecally counting on a, on a mob basis is how we'll be using uh, or monitoring for parasitism on a day-to-day -day basis. Fecal lead count reduction testing is the tool that we have to diagnose how effective a drench is on farm. And the, the basic principle of it is if I have drenched my uh, lamb today with an effective drench and that lamb goes on to pasture tomorrow and it consumes a juvenile worm stage, there is 21 days there before the larvae that I eat tomorrow has grown up, has mated, and is capable of laying its own egg. So if a drench is effective, there is 21 days after that drench where I should have no eggs passing my faeces. The only way I have an egg in the faeces of a lamb within 21 days of a drench is that that drench didn't kill all the stages inside my sheep. So we can very quickly look at 14 days after a drench, if there's eggs coming through, that indicates the drench was not effective and that indicates I need to look for drenches that are because continuing to use an ineffective drench is going to select very rapidly for a parasite population that's highly resistant to that product I'm using. So faecal lead count reduction testing, the two common methods that we use is one called a drench check as a single test I've drenched my lambs with a product today and in two weeks I'll test to see that that was effective and that's a, that's a procedure we should be doing annually. We should be checking that the routine product that we're using on our lambs um, is effective each season and that there's no early warning signs. Um, the full faecal lead count reduction test is testing multiple groups and often individual actors so I'll test white drench BZs on their own, I'll test levamazole on their own, I'll test the mectin group or ivermectin on its own and build a very comprehensive picture that once I know the individual actives, how efficacious they are, I can very confidently predict how the combinations will work as well. Um, and that kind of process should be realistically done every three to five years um, to, to make sure that I'm uh, not seeing a deterioration in the efficacy of my drenches, that I'm choosing drenches that are highly effective. Um, and you know, uh, controlling parasites is such a, a, a hugely important issue to maintain productivity. I can't afford to get that wrong. At this stage we have done, a, uh, well before I was on board the test was done in 2019. Um, that raised some anomalies and a follow-up test was done in 2020. We're looking at repeating that test in 2022. So it'll be a two-yearly interval at Lanacost at the moment. Um, but going forward from there, depending on what projects we have, we anticipate going to more of a three to five year type schedule. Um, but there may be some best practice management type approach where we want more regular testing to demonstrate the real-time efficacy of the programs we're implementing. So we may see more frequent tests than that. The first thing I like to highlight with conversations about genetics is the, the terms are used to explain resistance in parasites and then we confusingly use the term resistance to explain a trait in sheep. And it's very important when you're using that word resistance that you're clarifying whether you're talking about a resistance trait in the parasite which allows it to survive a chemical or are we talking about sheep that are resistant to parasites and that's a trait in the sheep. And so when you're talking genetics I'm talking about sheep that are genetically resistant to the establishment and the egg laying of parasites in them. And so these are sheep that um, are bred to be challenged by parasites that are under a worm challenge that are not drenched and will develop lower egg counts than sheep that are not resistant under the same parasite challenge. And while it takes uh, time to introduce genetics and get them across a ewe flock, and we're talking 10, 15, 20 years, if you don't start considering that now, you're 
20 years behind where it's going to make a real difference in UFOC. And I think it's an important topic to start considering now um, because I see it as an important part of the future. And breeding sheep that are genetically superior and able to fight parasites more effectively on their own without chemical is hugely beneficial to delay drench resistance because every step that I can use to take chemical out of the system is going to exert less pressure on selecting for the, the nasty parasites that survive our chemicals.